Good afternoon, Adventures of Casey. So we have not been out for a while. Uh, we needed to get out. There's a big storm coming in tonight. Uh, possibly get a little bit of snow flurries. Uh, the winds are pretty high, but uh, we needed to be out. So here we are. And uh, while we're out here, uh, I wasn't planning on doing any videos or any testing or write-ups, but uh, we're gonna do this one here for our Starlink uh, case portable system that we have. I've been meaning to do this since I put it together back in October and just have not had the opportunity. We're out here, why the hell not? So stay tuned. Now, one of the things that was important to us when we put this thing together was portability and protection. Uh, Starlinks aren't the cheapest thing in the world, although they have come down quite a bit in price. Uh, we found some cases for them online, uh, but the companies were wanting like $450, $500 for the case. And when you're only paying 550 bucks for the Starlink, uh, that's a little bit ridiculous. So uh, we put our heads together. We decided to come up with a plan, uh, found a used Pelican case on eBay and for like 79 bucks and a little bit of woodworking skills, some foam, a couple hours of time, and voila, we have a case that probably we're into it about 140. Uh, so let's do a quick little walkthrough and let's show it to you. Okay, so hopefully this wind doesn't completely drown out uh, my voice while I'm talking here. Uh, this is going to be our main case. You can see it's just a Pelican 1600. We bought it bare with no foam. Uh, we replaced everything inside anyway. Uh, the only modifications we had to do, we bought this little guy from NOCO. Uh, what it is, is it seals watertight and gives us a spot to plug in uh, the power cord. Uh, Starlinks require 110, uh, 110 volts to operate. They don't operate on DC, so you have to find a way to convert that. Uh, for us, we just use the inverter that's, that's here in the back of the truck and runs off the batteries. I also, in my case, have an extra small inverter. We'll get to that in a minute, uh, in case somebody wants to borrow this and they don't have something hooked up in their truck, like my wife and her horse trailer or something on a show. Uh, this piece right here, this little call it, it's just uh, a piece of electrical conduit. Uh, what it does, or not conduit, it's a connector, and it just, it's like a male adapter. So it threads on the back side with a collar. That's what holds it to the lid. Uh, a little rubber cork that fills that hole. That keeps everything watertight inside. And then we just did a reinforcement here. Uh, this is just a piece of aluminum plate that we cut out. Um, and this is where your main Starlink dish is gonna mount right here. And uh, we'll cover that here in a bit. Okay, let's get to the meat and potatoes of this thing. So here you can see, we just opened up the case. This is the uh, inside of that male adapter. Um, we have our Starlink router, the Starlink dish itself. This is our auxiliary inverter that I can plug into a cigarette lighter or hook directly to your battery. Uh, I ran this with a power cord, so we'll get that out here in a minute as the extension cord stays in there. And then this is the actual Starlink cable that goes to the dish. Now, it came with a 50-foot cable. You can get an expansion up to 75. Personally, I'd like to buy a 10-footer and take up less space in my case, but uh, I don't think they make something like that. Uh, the rest of this is all just dividers that we, we just cut out of some uh, 3 8 plywood and then threw some urethane on it just so it doesn't rush. The router never has to come off. Everything is connected. Everything's attached. In fact, the only connection that needs to be made on this is to connect the satellite right here. So um, in just a second here, I'll set up on a tripod and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to go with how we set this thing up. So first thing you do is you go ahead and you remove your little rubber stopper, open your case, lift our router up out of the way. We're gonna go ahead and remove the entire dish and just set our router right back in there. We're gonna take the cable for the dish. We're gonna run it up through the center of the case and we're gonna close the case. And what this does is this will allow the entire system to stay watertight and waterproof uh, if you want to put it on your roof or it rains while you're in camp or, or anything like that. Another thing we've done is we've, we've got this little sleeve, found it in the plumbing section, and uh, it's sized perfect on one side, the other one's just a little bit bigger, it's got this little itty bitty notch in there uh, for the cable. If you want to run the cable outside of this, but we don't use that at all, we just run everything inside the box. And I'll show you how that works. So that just kind of sits there on the post. 
we take our cable from Starlink. It just slides up in there and connects. And then we just feed everything down in there, set it down, put this over the top, and just a couple little quick twists with the tie, boom. Now everything is waterproof, it's ready to go. Okay, we just ran a power cord. We're just gonna put this thing out here on the ground. And that just connects there into the box. Got a pretty decent view of the sky, but let's uh, get it up and running. Okay, so here you can see that uh, we're connected. We are online. Uh, you see underneath where it says online, it actually says heating. Uh, if you're not aware of this, Starlinks have a feature on them uh, that will actually allow it to melt snow as it's coming down uh, so that you don't get snow build up and uh, interfere with your connection. But uh, yeah, now that we're up, let's go ahead and do a speed test and let's see how well we're doing out here in the middle of nowhere. I'd say those are some pretty good numbers considering I barely even have SOS down here on my phone. Okay, so one of the things that we use to control everything in this truck is, is the uh, Victron components. And what I want to show you here right now is if we click on our, our shunt and we connect to it, I'll just take a couple seconds here. Uh, this will show that right now with that Starlink running, uh, we're pulling... Looks like nine amps, eight to nine amps. Um, that's pretty significant. So, you know, you don't want to run that heater too long. If we go back right now, and that nine amps in the hole is including what we're pulling in from the solar. So what we're going to do, let's see what we have coming in on solar. Now it's a cloudy day, so we're not going to be picking up a lot. We do have uh, 300 watts of panel up here. Uh, here you can see, uh, so 300 watts of panels, and uh, we're only pulling in 29 watts of juice. So we only got about 2 amps coming in, so um, that puts us at almost an 11 amp draw uh, total. If we have 2 coming in, and we got 9 going out, um, without that solar, we'd be drawing 10 to 11 amps. So pretty significant if you're going to run the heater function. So we've turned off the heater function. And uh, here you can see that our amp draw is uh, significantly less. So keep that in mind uh, if you're going to be in a cold climate. Um, you can manually turn that heat function off. You can have it set to be automatic. Uh, it's up to you. If this thing's ground mounted, I can go wipe snow off of it if I really need it that much. Um, but like I said, so here you can clearly see, uh, what, about a 7, 8 amp difference uh, just by turning off the heating function so there you go quick down and dirty on our starlink system how we use it how we store it how we transport it and uh how it works for us out there in the woods so uh once again any questions bitches moans gripes complaints anything you have on my videos go ahead and drop something down in the comments uh, if there's any piece of gear you see in the background or any upcoming gear or things that you guys want an opinion on go ahead and let me know I'll be more than happy to try and get a video up to you. Um, until then, just get out there and adventure. Cheers.